Hello everyone and welcome to Game Room 1. Now in this video I'd like to talk about this, my old gaming PC. It's running an i5-4690K on an ASRock Z97 ITX motherboard. Now whilst this was my main PC, it was running at 4.5 GHz underneath the Cooler Master water cooler. However, about a year ago, I, I upgraded to a Ryzen-based system and this machine has been kept as a spare and only gets used occasionally. But about a year before the upgrade, I decided to give liquid metal a go. I'd noticed that temperatures were creeping up and I'd read that the thermal paste between the heat spreader and CPU die could dry out, causing temperatures to gradually increase. I opted for Thermal Grizzly Conductor Knot. It's generally considered to be one of the best on the market and having used this myself, I can vouch for the performance. It definitely makes a big difference to the temperatures. Um, I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested in buying some of this yourself. But that was two years ago and I haven't checked the condition of the liquid metal since the application. When I switched over to using the Ryzen rig as my main daily driver, I cannibalized this machine and took the water cooler off it and replaced it with a relatively low cost air cooler. I also dropped the CPU back to 4 GHz and selected stock voltage. This seemed to work okay for a while, but recently I've started noticing temperatures creeping up again. It's not overheating or thermal throttling during normal usage, but running a stress test like Intel burn test soon heats this CPU up to 80 odd degrees temperatures that I'm not that comfortable with. And that's after just five passes. I actually had to stop this test because I was worried about the CPU getting too hot. So with that said, let's go ahead and pull this PC apart. Now, I don't know about you, but this CPU cooler uses those Intel clips, the ones that you sort of push down and twist. Now, I absolutely hate those clips. Um, I, I don't know what Intel were thinking. I think they're designed to be very simple to use, but I, I just find them really frustrating. I'd much rather have a back plate and a screw going through the top of the CPU heatsink. Um, spring loaded screw, that sort of thing. So you can't over tighten it, you can't under tighten it easily. Um, because these clips are just horrible. If you're not careful, you you can very easily break the ends of them as you're putting the CPU in place. It's it's not a good design. Um, but this wasn't an expensive heatsink. So because of that, I think they've they've got opted for these cheap twist push um fittings. Um but anyway, let's, let's get this heatsink out of the machine. You can see me here fighting with those little clips. Um, this last one on the back corner is a perfect example. If, I, if it was a screw one, I'd be able to get a nice screwdriver down there, just undo the screw, lift the heatsink out, no problem at all. Because it's in an awkward place, it was very fiddly to actually get that last one undone. Um, but that's all four of them now undone. So let's go ahead and lift this out. And as you can see, there's a, a bit of dust on this heatsink, but not a lot. You can still see through most of the grills. Um, a quick brush down and this will be absolutely fine. And here you can see the thermal paste. Now, this hasn't been in the PC as long as the liquid metal. This was changed when I replaced, well, when I actually pulled off the water cooler and replaced it with this heatsink, so a year or so ago. Um, it hasn't dried out, it looks okay. I think at the time I used um, MX4, I think it was at the time, but I can double check that. Um, but this looks fine, so let's move on. Okay, now we've got the PC apart. Let's go ahead and lift off this heat spreader. Now remember, I haven't actually looked under here for two years, so I've got no idea what we're gonna find. There's only one way to find out though. And there you have it. That's the liquid metal after two years. First impressions, it's definitely dried out a bit. It's not completely dried out, but this stuff does go on very liquid in, and hence the name liquid metal. You'll see what I mean later on in this video when I reapply new liquid metal. Um, so first impressions, yeah, it's definitely dried out a bit. It could be worse. I have seen worse. I've seen thermal paste that's like chalk, so it's not as bad as that. Um, now here is a, a sort of a close up shot and you can see for yourself that it appears to have sort of be, still be evenly spread out across the heat spreader and across the CPU die, which is a good sign. Um, but yeah, it's, it's slightly drier than it is when you apply it first time round. So with that said, let's see if we can clean this old liquid metal up. Now I'm just using some isopropyl alcohol on some cotton wool buds. Um, it seems to come off relatively easy. Just keep using clean cotton buds until you've got rid of all of it. Um, now, the important thing here is that the dye itself looks absolutely mint still. There doesn't appear to be any damage at all to the CPU dye. Now that's the most important thing because obviously that's the expensive part of the CPU. Now, as we move over to the heat spreader itself, um, I'm hoping the same thing applies, that there's, there's no damage, but you know we don't know that until we actually clean it up. So let's give this a good clean. Using the same technique again, just some isopropyl alcohol and some cotton buds. Um, and straight away, you can see what looks like a few small pits there. I don't even see them, the, the, the small dark dots there look like little pits. 
on the surface of the heat spreader. And there seems to be a lot more of the liquid metal actually on the heat spreader side than it does on the CPU side, the CPU die side. Um, so let's keep going, let's just clean this up and then we'll take a closer look at that heat spreader. So in this shot, you can see what I mean. I mean, right up close to the CPU here and you can see all those little pits that are where the CPU die was contacting the heat spreader. Um, I mean, it's not major and I'm not that worried about it, mostly because it's easy to pick up a cheap Celeron or Pentium of this era and use the heat spreader off that if I was really worried about it. Um, I'm not that worried about it. This is after two years and it hasn't exactly eaten through the heat spreader. It's just made a few small pits. And the trade-off here is the, you know, the, the reduction in temperatures over those two years were well worth um, the cost of this heat spreader. Because with the, with the water cooler, the difference was dramatic um, when I first applied the liquid metal and temperatures plummeted. And it made it, you know, especially in that small case in that ITX um, rig, it really did help. So I still think it was a good idea, a good decision at the time to use liquid metal. Um, but at some point I might have to replace this heat spreader. Okay, with well that said, let's reapply some new liquid metal to this. Now I'm intentionally gonna use a bit more than I normally would simply because of those pits. My logic being that if I apply a bit more, we've got a better chance of actually filling up all them pits and let's get like a really good contact between the heat spreader and the CPU die. Um, but if you've got more experience with liquid metal than I have, by all means, let me know in the comments below if I'm doing something wrong here. I seem to find myself chasing the liquid metal around the CPU die a lot when I do this. And this is with the, the applicator that Thermal Grizzly actually supply with the liquid metal. So, you know, if if you know of a better technique than what I'm doing here, then, then please do let me know in the comments. I'd love to get some feedback on this. Um, I've only done this a couple of times myself. I didn't use as much of this as this first time around, but I thought this time around, like I said, because there's those pits to worry about, um, let's have a bit extra. You may also be interested in that that's, that tape there is, I think it's called Scotch Super 33. Um, if you're doing this, I'd advise using that tape to cover up any electrical components. It's very good, it's very sticky, it's tested up to very high temperatures. And you can see that after two years under this CPU heat spreader, the tape's, the tape's completely intact, no issues whatsoever. Um, I'll see if I can find a link to it. Um, so here we go again, we're just putting on a bit of new thermal paste just to finish up this job. Um, and with that said, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get the heat sink back on it and we'll run some tests and we'll just see whether we've made a, a difference to the temperatures. So here we are with the PC fully assembled and running the same test, Intel burn test. You can see that we've dropped a good six or seven degrees um, off the CPU temperatures here now. I'm happy to admit that this isn't the most scientific test. I didn't um, test the liquid metal and the thermal paste separately. I just replaced them both at the same time. Um, but it, it's, it's worked. And the important thing is I was able to run 10 passes of this test. I was able to leave the test to run and complete without the CPU getting anywhere near 80 degrees. So, I mean, I call that a win. That's a significant improvement. Um, so yeah, it wasn't scientific, but it does demonstrate that it's well worth putting your PC apart every couple of years at least, just to give it a clean, just to replace the thermal paste. If you are using liquid metal, it's probably worth replacing it. Okay, so with the results in, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope it's been helpful. I hope some of you have found it interesting. If you have, please hit the thumbs up button. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.